Control Logic's Maintainer Certificate, Chapter 10. Troubleshooting 1756 Digital I.O. Module Properties. Objective, interpret digital I.O. problems using status indicators and Studio 5000 Logic's Designer and resolve module faults. In this tutorial, we're going to look at real-world input modules, how to configure them, and their diagnostic abilities. First, I'm going to open Studio 5000 and create a new project. I'm going to select a processor and give this some name. I'm going to make sure the revision of my software is correct. Choose the size of a chassis. Choose the location where I want that processor to be in. And click Finish. So I have a brand new project open. It doesn't have any logic. It doesn't have any tags. And if I scroll down in my controller organizer to the I.O. configuration, I can see that my seven slot backplane only has a processor in slot two. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to add an input module into slot zero. To do that, I'll right click on my I.O. configuration and select new module. Now in the Select Module Type dialog box, I have all types of modules available if I want to scroll through and find the one I want. Or I can clear the filters and say I only want to look at digital cards. Here I see one that looks like a good example, the 1756-IB16D Diagnostic Input, DC Voltage. I think I want to create one of those. It asks me for a name. I'm going to give it a generic name. And it asks for the slot number. I'm going to leave it on zero. We can see over here in my controller organizer that that input module was configured and created. I'm going to close this dialog box. So after adding our input card, if we were to go to our controller tags, we can see that Studio 5000 automatically added the module defined data types for this card. That means the words that defined the configuration of the card and also the input to the processor from the card, which includes the data, that is the state of the input and output points, and also some fault timestamp and open wire diagnostic information. These module-defined structures give us ways to address and point to the information we want to analyze in our logic. If we go over here to our logic editor, and we wanted to look at point zero on our input card to see if whatever was wired to that point was on or off, we can go to our drop-down and go into our local zero, as in slot zero, input words, expand that, go into our data, and select point zero. And this instruction could analyze for us whether or not the input into slot zero point zero was on or off. If we want more information about our input card, we can go in our controller organizer and scroll down to our I.O. configuration, our backplane, and we can locate our card. If we right click on it, we can go to properties. Now depending on what version of Logix you're using, you might see this breakdown over here in a tree in the left hand, or you could see a group of tabs along the top. I'm going to be referring to these as tabs. Here in our general tab, we have the opportunity to view and edit the name of the module, reassign which slot it's configured to be in, and also look at the module definition which includes our electronic keying. We can change our electronic keying such that if we change the module while there's code active in this processor, it can throw warnings or not, depending on whether we have an exact match for the module or just a compatible module. If we head on down to the connection tab, we can see we have an RPI, which is a requested packet interval. That's a value that's stored in the controller 
that specifies how often the controller will look at this module for fresh data. It defaults to 20 milliseconds in this case. We have the opportunity to inhibit the module, which means the configuration will stay in the processor, but the module won't do anything. You can kind of expect that this might be a tricky thing to find if you're not getting data back from the module. Uh, an inhibited module will prevent things from working. So always go to your properties and check your connection tab and make sure your module isn't inhibited if you're trying to troubleshoot a particular module. Also, you can uh, major fault the controller if the connection fails while the processor is in run mode. Notice that this defaults to unchecked. The module info tab gives us a place to view information at runtime. That is, if we're online, we can see some information about this card, any major or minor faults, and its state. We would also have the opportunity to refresh this data on click or to reset the module in the event of a fault. If we navigate to the configuration tab, we can see that we have the opportunity to set filter times for various groups of input points. Notice that there's a different off to on transition filter time than off to on. And we have the ability to set these to zero, one, or two milliseconds, depending on how much smoothing we want on those inputs. There's also a checkbox to enable change of state for diagnostic transitions. And the help will tell us that that enables the module to transmit diagnostic status data with a timestamp when the diagnostic data changes state. That's a useful tool. Let's head down to our points tab. We can see a bunch of check boxes with enable change of state. What does that mean? Well, remember in the connection tab where we said our RPI dictates how often the controller scans this card for fresh data. And that's great. But what if you have an input point that turns on and off every five milliseconds because it's counting cans going by really quickly on a conveyor line? You'd miss some of that data. Well, if these boxes are checked, a change in your input state will also trigger a refresh of the data from this card, which is particularly useful. Otherwise, you'd be missing, missing transitions of inputs. There's also check boxes to enable diagnostics for an open wire. That generally means a cut cable or a loose connection. And then enable diagnostic latching, which we'll learn more about on the next tab. And finally, our Diagnostics tab, which shows indicators that double as reset buttons for any issues the cards had. You remember back here on points, we had the opportunity to enable diagnostics for an open wire and to latch that. So latching that would determine whether or not this indicator would only change state if an issue was currently active or whether it would change state and stay changed even if the issue went away. And this is useful because most of the time in a plant, you're not sitting here watching for issues on your laptop. You, you're going to know if you have an issue because something will disastrously break and shut down. And you have to come back at a later time and witness what exactly happened. So again, whether or not you even look for the problem on an input is something you check here. Whether or not you want it to be active only if the issue is currently present or whether you want the status to turn on and remain on until the programmer can view and reset it here.